Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. I am ready for the event. All right, Space Exploration Educators Conference. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. All right, do so you want me to go ahead? Okay, well, um, Station, Joe, this is Dottie and the Seek Ex Exploration Educators Conference. How do you hear us? Hey, Dottie, it is so good to hear you. And uh, welcome to all the crazy Seek teachers to the International Space Station. It's awesome to be with you. Joe, it's so good to hear your voice and to see you floating there in space. And at this time, I am going to hand it over to our colleagues, teachers with questions. Hi, this is Lauren from Fort Worth Academy in Texas. What skills did you develop as a teacher that you continue to use now as an astronaut or that make you a better astronaut? Hey, Lauren, there are so many skills that we develop as educators, as you all know, and there's so many, I would say, being a good communicator, you've got to be a great communicator to be a great teacher. And up here on the space station, we're communicating with control centers around the world and with our crewmates. You got to be flexible, not stretching flexible, but able to adapt to different situations. As you know, when you're in the classroom, it almost never goes the way you plan. So you have to be able to adapt and think on your feet. And that's what we have to do up here pretty much every day on the space station. So being a, an educator, I think, is the perfect job leading into becoming an astronaut. Hi, this is Amanda from, Corp from Corpus Christi Catholic School in Pennsylvania. If you were to go back to the classroom, is there anything you would do differently or add to your curriculum due to your experience with NASA? Yes, I would do almost everything I did differently. I thought I was a good teacher when I taught, but I've learned a lot since then. Part of it is being here at NASA and part of it was going back to school. So when I became an astronaut, as Dottie knows, we went from being teachers to being students. And I think sometimes teachers forget what it's like to be a student and to be confused, to be lost, to need help. So I think I would uh, maybe a little bit more empathetic to my students. Um, a lot of technical things I might do differently. My assessments might be different to make sure I, that my students understand what I'm trying to teach them just because I teach it doesn't mean they understand it. So yes, I would do a lot of things differently. This is Selena from Cesar Chavez Elementary in Far, Texas. Has anything occurred that caught you off guard, you were not prepared for, or was not what you were expecting? Again, a lot of things. Uh, when you come up here uh, for a long duration mission, you don't know what you're gonna do every day you don't even know what's going to happen in a couple of hours sometimes because the day the day changes on you so what i think was that i've realized since i've been up here is how hard it is to stay focused all day long and how easy it is to make mistakes we were just talking uh, this morning about a procedure looking at a note and you know step two got totally missed just because we just made a mistake and so it was kind of unexpected that it would be so hard to maintain that focus and again how easy it is to make a mistake so luckily again we have a big team helping us out and keeping us in track hi this is Lori from marymount school in quincy massachusetts we all hope that we make a lasting impression on our students while you're on station do you ever hear the words of a teacher run through your head Yes, unfortunately. Um, so one of them that, you know, and I use him as an example all the time was Mr. Walters, my, my metal shop teacher. So of all the subjects, uh, his voice rings in my head. And, you know, basically he said, you know, be smart and don't screw up. And he probably didn't say it so nicely, but when you think about having 30 high school kids in a metal shop welding, uh, you know, working on the forge, the lathe, the bandsaw. I mean, he was crazy to let us do that. 
but it taught us a lot about responsibility and really just to look at what you're doing at that moment, and that's the most important thing you're doing. And I'll never forget that lesson. Thanks, Walt. Hi, this is Amy from West Jackson Elementary in Houston, Georgia. In thinking about inspiring students towards NASA careers, other than being an astronaut, what NASA career do you find most fascinating? Wow, there are, that's a tough question. There are so many careers at NASA. And of course, being up here and being an astronaut, we get this opportunity to talk to you. But if, man, it's a tough question. I think being a geologist, I love geology. And I worked with a uh, geologist, uh, Dr. Jake Bleacher, and we went to Hawaii. He's studying volcanoes and trying to make correlations with what's, uh, what has happened on Mars. And so I think mixing the astronaut stuff, the space stuff with geology, maybe a planetary geologist would be, uh, would be pretty cool to do. Hi, Joe. This is Michael from Fieldson Lower School in the Bronx. Many of my students have started to dream of working for a space company or being an astronaut one day. What advice would you have for students who want to be a part of the exploration of space? Well, I think it's a, it's a pretty exciting time. And I think if I had to give somebody some advice, I might say be creative. Um, if we're going to explore and go places we've never gone before, we need to think outside the box. We need to use every bit of creativity we have. Um, be passionate about what you do because space exploration is not easy and it takes a long period of time, so you've got to be patient. Uh, but if you love it, I think the rewards are going to be great and it's just something in us that uh, we need to do. So follow that dream and tell them to do it and we need them to do it. So that's uh, pretty exciting. Hi, this question is from Maya from Thomas Edison Energy Smart Charter School in New Jersey. What is one thing you have experienced in space that you wish you could adequately capture to share with all of our students? It's pretty cool we have people from all over the country uh, here this morning, but you guys are asking me really hard questions. You know, I, you're killing me. Um, maybe one thing that we do up here on a regular basis is uh, is teamwork. Um, it's one of the most important things we do, whether it is working with our crewmates or working with control centers around the world. And it's kind of hard to to express that and share how much we actually rely on each other every day throughout the day, whether it's somebody helping you with an activity, mission control, watching you over your uh, your shoulder and helping you out. And so it is definitely a, uh, a team sport up here. And it's one thing I hope people uh, can maybe better get a better grasp of. Hi, this is Katrina from Wakulla Middle School in Florida. How do we as educators make the experiments completed on the ISS relatable to our students and demonstrate the real world connections between life there and here on Earth? And can you provide a great example of a project in space that has been monumental for your for life here on Earth? You guys are killing me. Um, I think what we're doing here is pretty easy to to, to share with students and relate um, to everyday life. So about half of the studies that we do up here is all part of the national lab. And that is all about benefiting life on Earth. So I think you could look at the various experiments that we have, and most of them are gonna have a very, very kind of everyday application. Um, one that I've been told recently uh, was Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, there was a payload that JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, was working on looking at crystal growth. And from that, they were able to make a product that's in clinical trials right now. And so there are lots of uh, examples like that. I was working on one about a month ago called Synthetic Bone, where they're looking at uh, putting an additive into uh, bone cells that will help uh, keep the bone structure together or if you have a pin inside. So there are just tons of examples. The NASA spinoffs has a lot that you can look at. So. I think for any student, no matter what they're interested in, you can find something that we're doing that will interest them.
This is Phyllis from Space Center Houston. During the Apollo era, the mission to the moon was a national goal. It was part of our daily lives permeating our culture. How do we reignite this sense of everyone being a part of the mission, making space exploration a national or international goal once again? Well, I think you guys are doing a great job there at Space Center Houston. And a big part of that is just sharing what we're doing. It's pretty exciting, the work that we're doing on the space station. And there are a lot of people that don't even know that we've had humans up here for so long, every day, uh, working on the space station. So I think we need to, uh, to do a better job sharing what we do. During the Apollo era, of course, it was all about the space race. But today, I think it's more about space collaboration. So if we want to do things that are much more advanced than what we've done, it's going to take uh, international collaboration and us working together. So I think the race days are over and it's time to work together. Hi, my name is Jody from Moriarty Middle School in New Mexico. What advice would you give to students struggling academically or overcoming other obstacles? Hello, well, I think the first thing is don't give up. I think we all struggle. Um, again, you guys have Dottie there. She's going to be great to talk to. But when we first got here, we struggled a lot. It was hard. And so don't give up on yourself. Um, and another big thing, you have to ask for help. I don't know how many times in college I had to take these, uh, you know, get a tutor or find somebody that would help me. And so if you don't ask for help, you're not going to get it. So um, also, work hard, challenge yourself, but the main thing is don't give up on yourself. You can make it happen. It just might be harder. Some things will be harder for you than other people, but there's no reason why you can't work hard. Hey, Joe, this is Nathan from the Mary White Ovington School in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, looking back on your K-12 educational experience and taking into consideration the experience you are now having, is there anything that you wish had been more a part of your early educational experience to better prepare you for a NASA career? Hey, Nathan. Um, you know, luckily, I had a pretty good uh, um, educational program growing up. I'm a public school person, and I think they did a really good job teaching me the basics and I think we need to uh, to focus on that if you don't have a solid background in reading or in math it's just going to impact you every year that you're behind it makes it harder and harder to grasp these new uh, subjects so as much as we can do to give students a really really solid foundation in the basics of reading and math I think is going to help them uh, something else I wish I would have had and of course being on the space station is more of a bilingual education. I think we can do a better job uh, teaching students at an earlier age a different language. Um, it's been a struggle for me to learn Russian. Um, and I think that, you know, we start that at an earlier age with students, that part of the brain is going to ignite. And kind of along with that is maybe add more of the arts, whether it be just, you know, uh, music or any other types of arts, I think are super important. And sometimes those are overlooked. Hi, Joe. This is Debbie from Harrison Middle School in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My goal as an educator is always to prepare students to tackle any challenge that they will face in their future. What qualities and skills do you think best prepared you to transition to life as an astronaut? And how can we as educators do a better job of promoting or encouraging the needed skill sets for future generations of astronauts? Well, I know you guys are all doing a great job right now with your students, and I know you're going to learn a lot at the conference. It's just going to enhance your teaching. Um, maybe for uh, life as an astronaut, it's um, a lot. Of, I think we need to do a better job maybe with uh, problem-solving skills. So a lot of hands-on stuff is super important. So the more opportunities you give students to, you know, be creative, analyze data, I think is super important. And so, you know, the problem-solving type uh, curriculum is, is pretty cool to do. 
And, you know, knowledge is great. We need the knowledge, but students need to know how to use that knowledge to answer questions and just, uh, again, be creative and figure out how to solve that problem. Hi, Joe. Jennifer from Montgomery High School, Texas. We are all aware of the physiological changes that take place within the human body concerning fluid shifts when humans are living on the space station. Does it feel any different? Can you physically feel the fluids have moved, moved upward in your body? Yeah, we jokingly say that, you know, astronauts have big heads. Um, but as the fluid shifts, when you first get to space, you know what happens. Um, I think Barb Morgan has probably described it like this, where it feels like you are uh, you're standing on your head. And that lasts for a while. And, you know, you feel that pressure. You feel that kind of a, a headache there. And so it is, uh, it's definitely real. After a while, it kind of, it goes away. Your body equalizes and you forget about it until you get back home. And now it starts to shift back uh, because of gravity. And then you're reminded all about it. So it is real and you definitely know what's happening. Hi, Joe. Renee from the Museum of Natural History in Gaudet School in Rhode Island. What is the protocol in the case of a real and serious unexpected medical emergency occurring on station, such as a heart attack or something else that needs surgery? Well, hopefully that won't happen. Um, we do uh, get screened quite a bit, and so most of us are relatively healthy. I'm pretty lucky. We have a doctor up here, uh, the Japanese astronaut, so we're in pretty good hands right now. But we have our flight surgeons that are always there in mission control. So if we were to have a serious problem, that would be our first thing to do. Uh, we have the basics here, uh, an AED device that we would use for the immediate response. And then we would go ahead and contact our flight surgeons and get any further assistance. But if it was really something that we had to leave the space station, we always have our Soyuz vehicle here and we always have a time every day that we can uh, hop in there and get back home uh, fairly quickly. So, you know, we try to address the problem here, but if we have to go home, we do have our Soyuz available. for the year of education on station. What do you hope will be your impact? I might have missed uh, part of that, but I think you said, what do we hope will be the impact for the uh, year of education in space? Um, I hope you allow me and Ricky, who will be coming up after I leave, to represent you all um, and the work that you do every day. Um, I hope that we can highlight the teaching profession and share with everybody the hard work that you're doing and the impact that you have on our students, on society. Um, I don't think that people, a lot of people, everybody knows teachers. Um, they think they can be a teacher, but it's hard to be a teacher. And so I hope in this year we can highlight you and the work that you're doing and show everybody how important it really is. Thank you so much, Joe. We love watching you float around up there. Take care from all of us here at Zeke. Have a great time. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from Space Center Houston. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.